Thanks very much. What is going on, everybody? Thanks so much uh, for being here. I actually can't say I sat in those seats because Ivy, this Ivy building, did not exist when I was around. Um, but it's beautiful, and I appreciate you guys. Um, and so today, I'm going to be sharing with you how to grow a multi-million dollar business without investors. Okay. And therefore, what I'm going to show you is that this is potentially the key to living a million dollar lifestyle. All right. Well, the middle one up. It might be. So in business, shit happens. Okay. But yeah, so, so what I want to show you, uh, there was a really cool book cover I found. Uh, this guy I've listened to before, his new book came out, it's The Road Less Stupid. Because entrepreneurship is really stupid. If you look at the stats, not many people succeed. It is statistically not in your favor to make a good amount of money as an entrepreneur. Um, but what I will show you today is your, your chances of making money and living a great life and doing what you want to do so you can give however you want to give in life will go up if you do it without investors. Okay, so who here wants to start their own company? All right, sweet. So the first question I want to ask all of you is why? Like, Why do you really want to start a company? What is the end outcome? And I definitely want to get your guys' opinions. It's all about, like, what do you want to have? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Like, these are the three areas that you should be thinking about why you want to be an entrepreneur. So when you think about what you want to have, I'll get you guys some answers to shout them out. Like, do some of you guys want penthouses? Do some of you guys want jets? Do some of you guys, like, what are the things you want to have? And, like, it's okay to want to have things. So shout them out. What are some things that you guys want to have as the reasons why you want to start a business? Legacy. Legacy. Okay. Amazing. Freedom. Freedom. Achievement. Achievement. Okay. All right. Sorry? Control. Okay. Now what about like, fit, like things that you want to have? A yacht. You want to have a yacht. Who wants to have a big team? Who wants to have an amazing office with slides? Okay. What about, what about what you want to do? Okay, so what are the things you guys want to do? Why do you want to start a business? What are the things you want to do in life? Okay, what else? What do you guys want to do in life? Think about why you want to start a business. What is it going to give you options and freedom to do? There's nothing wrong with that. Who wants to travel the world at some point in their life? Right, who wants to donate to some causes? Okay. So I want you guys to really think big and you gotta be around people. It's hard to think big if you've never even been around someone who thinks bigger than you because you don't know what you don't know. So I guess I'm gonna have to use this. We're all IV or business students here. I'm sure you guys are all Excel wizards like me. Do the math. This is a really, really good exercise. Do the math of everything that you want to have, everything that you want to do, everything that you need to have a good life, a super fucking awesome life, and a life that you can only dream of right now. Do the math of what the numbers cost. Because you'll be surprised at how little it takes to give you the life that you want to have. So that you can then not worry about money and then go do and give the way that you want to do. Whatever the cause is, whatever the thing that you want to do is, if you don't have to worry about the money side of things, you now actually get to give more. All right, there's a lot of people who, it's like, I don't care about money, I care about giving, I care about contributing, I care about making a dent in the world, having a legacy. Okay, but it is your duty in order for you to give to the world to actually get to the point financially so you can give more. If that's your mentality where you only need $100,000 or $50,000 a year to live, great. Get that coming in when you sleep so you can now focus entirely on your purpose and your mission. But if you want to make tens of millions of dollars a year and have jets and have yachts and have summer homes, winter homes, make, give your op kids opportunities that you never got before, then just do the math 
and see how much money you need, you need for it. Okay, so you outline all your costs. Okay, multiply by two for Canadian taxes. Okay, and then uh, figure out, on average, you guys, over your whole life, I don't care how good of an investor you are, you're probably gonna average five to 15% return on your money for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So this, this equation will show you how many, how many assets you need to have. What's the value of the assets that you need to have? This needs to be a target for you as an entrepreneur. So you can go do what you want to do. And the, the, the thing is, investors will slow that down. Because they don't care about your money. They don't care about your purpose. They don't care about your mission. They care about their fund. Okay, now the good news about entrepreneurship is that everything's in your hands. The bad news is everything is in your hands. And so not everyone's ready for that. Not everyone should be an entrepreneur right away. Not everyone should try to bootstrap a company because maybe they need to have extra resources to learn along the way. But whatever it is, you gotta do you. And right now, entrepreneurship's really cool, okay? But in five, 10 years, my bet is that it won't be cool anymore. There'll be some other industry that's cool. Photography, videography, robotics. You know, it wasn't cool 10, 20 years ago. It's just going through a phase. So whatever it is in life, you gotta do you. And, and it's, it's tough when we're all in school and there's a bell curve and you wanna be on the right side of it. Okay, but all that matters is that you guys got to do you. So you really figure out why you want to do business. I know a bunch of answers came out. To be honest, it's a little fluffy. Some of those responses you guys gave were a little bit fluffy. Like, be real. Because as soon as you are real with yourself, you will get to where you want to go. All right, so I want to share a little bit about where I've been, because it might give you some context into how I think. All right, maybe you're already getting a sense that I don't think the same as some other entrepreneurs. And I've been to Silicon, Silicon Valley, did 500 startups, the accelerator down there was around a, a huge culture and scene of kind of people. And it wasn't for my wife and I. We wanted to do things a little bit differently. And I know that investors already were like, what is this lean on your business? And I was like, yeah, I leased a tricked out Range Rover on 20 inch rims, supercharged. That's what entrepreneurs should do. Lease cool stuff on the business. They're like, well, not with our money. I'm like, well, then don't give me money, man. Like when you think about the stuff that you wanna have and that you wanna do, you have more freedom if you can figure out how to run a business without investors, okay? So I started doing the HBA thing, uh, combined it with kinesiology, and again, this was where I, I really push everyone here, and based on some of the pitches already, combine your passion and business. Figure out how to combine your passion and your business. Next, I did the, the Mosaic internship. You know, it was the first time I had to lead people who were my age, okay? If you're gonna start a business, you're gonna be leading people who are slightly below your age, a little bit above, and even some people who are 10, 20 years older than you. And at first, it's gonna be fucking weird. Right? It's going to be weird to manage people who are 10, 20 years older than you. And so the best piece of advice I can pass on to you guys is when you do it, which I hope you do, all you got to focus on is serving them. They don't work for you, you work for them. That is the definition, I think, of a new kind of leader. People don't work for you, you work for them. And if you just keep that on your mind, you'll figure it out. And they'll feel that, and now they'll want to be led by you because you're not just some arrogant young person trying to make money off them. You actually really care about their interests, their goals, their life. Once they feel that, it'll be a breeze. So I started in the Purple Spur and then eventually because I uh, was the only person to outperform Premier Productions, they joined and that's how Premier Life got started because I came to them and said, listen, I don't like the name Premier Productions. I think there's much bigger things that we can do as so we came up with PremierLife.ca. The main thing I learned from all of that, from doing events and doing stuff here at Western, was you need people. Like, I'm definitely one of the people, like who here has a small voice in their head that's like, dude, I'm the best at everything. Come on, be honest. It could be a big voice too. 
Okay, but a lot of us have little voices. They're like, dude, I'm fucking awesome. Okay, but, uh, but you got to be humble and know that if you want to achieve your really big goals, you need lots of people. Okay, and so this is where you really got to learn how to, to lead and to work with people and know the value of others. Know where they're stronger and you're weaker. Okay, then, you know, I have... I put network marketing on here because some people hate this industry and I will go to my deathbed saying it was the training ground for entrepreneurship. Because like who here has parents who are immigrants and don't know anything about business? Okay, so that's me. Um, and so I didn't know what I didn't know and I didn't have any mentors in business or entrepreneurship. I was gonna go down the corporate route and then I started having some issues and jobs where I wanted to push above my pay grade just because that's just what I do. And then I got introduced to this and I was around all these people who are the exact opposite. They're total entrepreneurs, they're amazing leaders, amazing speakers, they know how to motivate and inspire like no other, they know how to sell like no other, and they really taught me this one thing. Success is 80% psychology. We get taught strategy at business school and at university in general. Success is 80% psychology, 20% mechanics and strategy. So they were the ones who got me into self-development, got me into audios and books and DVDs and reading. And this is a guy from, I went to learning schools. I couldn't even read and comprehend. I was going to get pushed back in grades. So I hated this stuff. But they're the ones who got me into it because I knew that it was required for me to get to where I wanted to go. All right, so if you're not already consuming stuff to develop your mindset in business, you got to start doing the training now. The next step that I did, which I think is important for entrepreneurship to, to I can share with you, is you might have to eat shit for a bit. Okay, so, so I've ate ramen and tuna, no joke, for months because you don't have any money and you got to put all your money into your business. And then before I started Park Bench, I was like, all right, I'm going to go into my passion, health and combine it with business. I got to get in the industry. All right, I'm going to go just be a personal trainer at Good Life. Just, I just need to get into the industry just to get my feet wet, start learning from people who are better trainers than me. And Good Life is the number one uh, fit, personal training revenue business in the world. So I was like, they've got to be doing something right. I'm going to go there and learn everything I can. And I had the end in mind of I'm in and out within six to 12 months so I can start my own thing and I'm going to learn a whole bunch while I'm there. But man, my friends and family are like, wait, you went to Ivy, you got a double major and you're a personal trainer at a gym? What's going wrong? All right, and so you will get haters, you will get critics, you will get tons of people, and know that that means you're probably doing something right. You're probably doing something right if your closest family and friends are worried about you. And this is where your ability to be confident and certain in where you want, want to go and what you want to do is going to be built, because you're definitely going to need it when you go through business and try to grow a business. All right, so I did that. I was in and out within six, 12 months. I stuck with my plan. I was in and out. I started my own business, started in fitness. Then I learned the benefits of partnering with someone, partnering with a friend out west. We built Canada's largest mobile fitness franchise. And then by accident, and this is a key to business, I think, by accident, my, my business I'm in now, Park Bench, was born. So I loved all the pitches where it was your problem. So many entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley are coming up with their hypothesis, looking at some trend that's happening in the world and thinking they can go make money off it. And they fucking lose. They're the ones of the 80, 95% that fail in business. It is so much easier to sell a product, to make money, to provide customer service and to innovate if you were the customer. So Park Bench started because Amanda and I, I had a fitness company, she had a real estate business, we were looking for ways to make money, came up with this idea of amongst a bunch of other ones, it worked for us, and then someone said, I want that. How did you get one of these websites for the neighborhood? I want one for my business. And then we said, really? 
And then we went around Toronto with a PDF saying, this is our concept, this is the results we're getting, do you want this? This is how much it costs. And we made up the number of how much it cost, and then we started as high as we possibly could go. Okay, you want to know pricing strategy? Make it up. Go as high as you think, no, seriously. In pricing, everyone has all these frameworks of how to come up with pricing for products. Make it up. All money is made up. All pricing is made up. Go look at your competitors and go higher than them. Go as high as you can because you can always negotiate down. All right, so we went as high as we can and we negotiate down until finally someone within 30 minutes was like, I get this for this, here's a check. Oh, that was easy. And then we did it again and again and again and again. And when you start a business, especially if you're gonna do it without investors, you want velocity of sales. You want money coming in real quickly, easy. So you gotta come up with a compelling and irresistible offer that makes people go, here's money, and I don't have to follow up with you to go get that money. They're gonna give it to me right then and there because they want it real bad. All right, look for that irresistible offer so you can get money quickly and know that there are no rules in business, okay? Um, so that was kind of my background, and I'm gonna get some, to some strategies right now and some beliefs, psychology, for success as well as some strategies on how to grow a business without investors. All right, first belief, raising money is not good. I know I just came after a panel of investors in there. Raising money is the devil, all right? It is not cool um, and, and, and Canada's a little behind the curve. So Silicon Valley was real cool to raise money and, and it was funny, when we went down there, because in Canada, we're in Toronto, we go to networking events, they're like, how much did you raise? Did you raise money? Did you raise money? You raise money? We're like, no. And they're like, oh, you suck. And I was like, what? And then I went down to Silicon Valley, and they were like, yeah, we used to be like that, and now we're like, if we don't have to raise money, we don't want to raise money, because investors will ruin your life. I never heard one positive story of investors investing in startups. Because once you raise money, you are not an entrepreneur anymore. You are an employee of the fund. Think about that. Once you raise money, you are not an entrepreneur. You do not own that business. You are an employee of the fund. And if you have to raise money, it's because you're making less than you spend, which is the definition of losing. And who here believes in the sport of business? It is a sport, it is a game, and who here wants to lose? Right? If you're spending more than you make, you're losing. That's why raising money is not a good thing. Okay? And you've got to put that in your mindset because it's literally a full-time job to raise money. It is a full-time job. That's what they all prep everyone, entrepreneurs, to do. It's a full-time job to raise money, and that takes you away from growing your company. And why waste time if you have a path to make money? There were a bunch of businesses that I saw today. You guys don't need money. I can show you how to just instantly make money without having to even get 5,000 bucks. No problem. I would know how to do it 100%. So if you want advice, I will give it to you. All right, on your startup after the fact, just come find me. But it's amazing how we, there are so many ways to make money. And that is the goal because then you can run the business the way you want to run it. And as the founder, I know you have your vision, just like I do, of how you want to run things, because you believe it's the right way. And you don't want other people tampering with that way, because that's really also the way that you're gonna grow. Because you will fuck up, but that's okay, as long as it was from your own path. That will make you better as an entrepreneur, so that the sky's the limit when you're 30, 40, 50, 60. Second belief. All right, there's a lot of people out there saying that business and life is a marathon. It is a fucking lie, it is not true whatsoever. There is no proof whatsoever, physiologically, emotionally, spiritually, life and business is not a marathon, it's not a sprint, -tuh, singular. Okay, I'm not saying that life is a sprint, it is a series of sprints. Okay, and I'm gonna, there's a, I could go real deep, I did it on a podcast one time into this whole thing. I'm gonna show it to you real quick. All right, everyone close their eyes for a sec. All right, close your eyes. I want you to imagine the office for your company. Maybe it's a frat house, maybe it's a penthouse, maybe it's a co-working space, 
All right, if it's like us, you got cement walls because we are loud and we have music and ping pong. Okay, imagine your company, imagine you working there with your friends. Now I want you to imagine working like it's a marathon. How are you moving? Because it's a marathon. How are you thinking? Because your projects and tasks, it's a marathon. It's a goal to get, you know, uh, it's a marathon to get to your goal. How are you thinking? How are you moving? How are you acting? All right, now imagine that's business A. All right, business B. Close your eyes, get back into the scene. I want you to imagine sprinting through your tasks and projects. I want you to imagine sprinting to get your goals. I want you to imagine thinking like it's a sprint. Every day you're like, I'm in a sprint. You're behaving like it's a sprint. You're doing like it's a sprint. This is business B. Now open your eyes. Which business, A or B, will get to their goals faster and make more money, A or B? It's B. Dude, the top developers, they are sprinting. It's actually called a sprint. They're sprinting to get a piece of code done. The top salespeople are sprinting from meeting to meeting. The top, you know, owners and, and all entrepreneurs are sprinting from the project to project to get everything done. And then what they do is they rest, go to bed, wake up, and they do it all again. Sprint, do, sleep, rest. A marathoner does not run, stop, rest, run, stop, do it again. That's not how a marathon is run. You're constantly moving at a slow and steady pace to get the whole thing done. All right, but that ain't life. That is not business, that ain't life. You get up and you sprint, and you want to know why people in their 30s and 40s and 50s are reaching new levels? Because when you sprint, the more you sprint, the faster you get. And the more you sprint, the less rest you need in between sprints. And that's why people like Gary Vee and Tony Robbins are freaking crushing it at all, to, all new levels and they're 60 and 50. Do these people, I've really valued experience because these, th that is what experience does. It allows you to get way more done in a day. That youthful energy is real fucking bullshit. And that's why we gotta start sprinting now as young business owners to get through experiences as fast as possible so we can start developing ourselves and crushing it in our 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s like all the other great people. They're always getting better over time because they're constantly sprinting. All right, next belief. Do not build a company culture. That is a freaking farce. It is the worst thing ever to think about, to think about building a company culture. It is so complicated to think about how to build a company culture, like what the heck do you even do? But if you think about building a lifestyle for you and the people that, you want, that work with you, that you all love, then that's easier to think about. And that's easier to get people on board with. So don't build a company culture, build a lifestyle for you and the people that you wanna work with for that what you all want to do. And for us, that means working our face off. All the people at Park Bench, we love working our face off. We love achieving things. That's part of who we are. It's part of the lifestyle that we want. We don't care about going to, you know, parties and clubs all the time. We like to work. We like to achieve. We like to learn. But then at the same time, we also want to party really hard and celebrate every now and then. Okay, so don't build a company culture the other reason why is because it's enforcing that you're all co-workers. Culture is a business lingo term. And co-workers are a losing strategy. Think about all the dynasties in sports. Think about all the great groups of people who have done amazing things together. They are not co-workers. They are not teammates. They're brothers. They're sisters. And that is the kind of attitude that you want to have in your company. So much so that Amanda and I just got married last week and the majority of our bridal party were people who work at Park Bench because they are our best friends. So you gotta take, if you apply this, you will build that team that can win championships and achieve great things. Number four, and Ivy will really hate for me to say this, but do not focus on your competition. That graph, 
oh, that parietal curve or whatever it was called, SWOT analysis, what a fucking waste of time. I have, ne I have tried to apply these things that they taught us here sometimes, and when it comes to running a business, it's a complete waste of time. You're, the, the best advice I ever got was the guy who headed up Google's venture fund, and he says, yeah, I don't, I don't care about competition, because competition will never kill a company. The inability for the company to serve the customer, that will kill it. And all the data that you need is either in your business or in your customers' heads. And as long as you are just relentlessly talking to your customers and getting feedback and tracking and measuring, getting data in your business, that's all you'll need to keep winning. And when you get messages of like, oh, look at this news article, what your customer did, I'll be like, oh, thanks for sharing, delete. I don't care about my customers. You only have so much time in the day. You've got to focus on your business. You've got to focus on serving your customers. That's it. It makes things real simple and it works. All right. so. Couple strategic things. We are taught to compete. Competition is good. For the consumer, it is. For the entrepreneur, I want a monopoly. I want to dominate. I don't want to compete. And the best way to do that is to find a blue ocean. Okay, great book. Essentially, do what no one else is doing. Find a niche that no one else is doing. Because then, there's, then you're not worried about trying to stand out from competition, break through the noise, because there is no fucking noise around you. You've created this new opportunity. It, it is a little risky, but at the same time, it is so much easier to sell a new opportunity than something that's a little bit better than someone else. You can sell people a vision. People buy because of the vision for what you are going to give them. And it is so much easier to sell and to grow a company when you don't have to worry about people who are doing the exact same thing as you in the consumer's eyes. I know we'll all say, well, I got this unique selling proposition and all these cool features that they don't have. But to the consumer, they're like, yeah, you're all the same. So if you can find a blue ocean for your business, it's going to make your life so much easier because then you don't have to compete then you straight up dominate from day one. And if someone wants to copy you later, they'll have a hard time catching up. All right, number two. Okay, once you've got your business, you gotta recruit. All right, so this is a really, really challenging thing. I just talked to uh, Sunil, one of the VCs, and he was like, dude, it's almost like a crapshoot. You can do as much as you possibly can to try and find good people, but you're still gonna be wrong 50% of the time. Now, fortunately, I was definitely wrong a lot more often early on as we were growing the business and we were refining our hiring template. So if you want to steal something, okay, and just make it your own, it is this template right here. It works amazing to find good people who are then a culture fit, a role fit, and who are going to be successful very quickly because as a startup who have very little resources, you need people to get it right away and get started. Okay, so number one is you're going to get resumes. All right, so you don't need recruiters. Just do a bunch of ads on all the job platforms, get a bunch of resumes, and then you do a quick one minute scan. All right, so I wish I knew what I now know as recruiting people when I was looking for jobs, because this is how we look through resumes. What are the companies they looked for? Are they anything like ours? Because you're a product of your environment, so if those companies' culture are nothing like ours, you got way bad habits. I don't want to take you on. All right, number one. Number two, are there numbers in the resume? Because if you can explain what you did in numbers, I know that you're less full of shit than all the other people. Okay, number three, do you have anything about my company in your resume or cover letter? Did you personalize it whatsoever? You'd be a shock to how many people don't do that. Okay, um, and then number four, like, do you have really relevant, like, exact work experience? Because either you have exact amazing experience or there's nothing relevant. Okay, it's, it's relevant, it's got to be exact. Okay, and that's just a bonus if someone does have that. All right, and that's literally all you look for is personalization of your company, cultures they've been around so that you know they're more like you, um, and then do they, do they use numbers so they're less likely to bullshit. 
All right, and then you will then pass on some culture tests because I don't want to spend time talking to anyone if they really don't care about working here. So I'm going to send them a culture test, send them a personality test to see if they're a role fit, and then I'm just going to wait to see who gives sends even the test back because a bunch of people won't even send them back. So great, I don't have to worry about you anymore. All right, you clearly don't want to work where I, where I, at my company. So I'll send them these tests. Then the ones who are a fit, I will then do a quick 15 minute Skype because you want to see them as well as hear them. Okay, because that will tell you a whole lot more than that resume. Then you do what we call the mixer. Okay, so this is where we do three things. All right, first one is speed dating. All right, this comes from my premier life days. All right, so speed dating works amazing because then the candidates get to meet a whole bunch of people in your company, which do two things. One, if you're going to be a family, then you have to care what other people think, and people have to know they're contributing to the group. Which means when they're interviewing people, even if they started last week, they're really contributing and they really feel it. So it's really good for building your, you know, your team cohesion and your company. And then the second thing is some people will talk to the owner. Okay, when you guys start businesses, people will talk to you a whole lot different than they talk to the coworkers. All right, and the other people that work there. And you want to pick out all the people that are fake and all the people that are arrogant. All right, then we do a group chat which does two things. One, we get to ask them questions all right, and see how they operate in a group because we like to hang out as a company and I'm sure you'll want to have a group of people that likes to hang out together. But it does, the other thing is, is a little bit, uh, we don't really talk about it but it's totally happening, is I'm selling them. People are not just applying to work at your company, you've got to sell them on wanting to work for your company. And this is a great chance for you to sell them on why you're awesome and why they should maybe take less money elsewhere to join you, to join your team, to join your mission and work with you and work their face off. All right, so use that time in the mixer to even talk about the vision, the future of the company, and get them excited. All right, and then we like to play games sometimes at mixers because games really drop people's walls because it's, it's natural for people to be nervous in an interview. And you want to get them to be authentic and be themselves because that, you want the person that you see in the interview to be the person that, that is there every single day. And people will put on a face in an interview. It's your job to make sure they drop that face and just are themselves. So you and they both know that they're a fit. Okay? Then we do skill tests. Then we do one-on-ones. Do -one and at the end of the one-on-one, -on -one, I actually tell them yes or no if they have the job but they can't, they can't say yes yet. They have to shadow for half a day or a day because you don't really know until you know. You don't really know until you shadow so they get the person to come in and see what it's really like to work there and then at the end it's like, do you still want to work here? Do you still want to be a part of our family for the next one, two, three, four years? All right, so the shadowing at the end is key because then the person really knows what they're getting into. All right, strategy number three. This philosophy has guided me in my business, it's guided me in my life. It is super simple and simplicity is the key to execution. All right, if you're having issues with your energy, you're not working so hard, you feel like you're in a lull, or your staff, they're not making as many calls, they're not doing as much work, the results are going, the, the action is going down, then that should be a trigger that has nothing to do with them needing to be better at their job, it has everything to do with the vision they have in their mind or the vision that you have in your mind if you're all of a sudden in a lull energy-wise as an entrepreneur. If you lack action, it's because you lack vision. It's because you have not reestablished your goals and the things that excited you and motivated you to even start the business in the first place. That's, it, vision and goals is like a shower. You gotta do it every single day. You gotta keep reminding yourself why you're doing this because it is fucking hard, it's emotionally draining, but we all know the light at the end of the tunnel is there. So you gotta keep reminding yourself about that. Now, if you are hustling your face off and you're working super hard, which a bunch of you do, and you're not getting the results you want, super simple, training. Books, audios, videos, role play, tests, skill, like more one-on-one more -on -one training with someone who knows how to do it. Training, training, training. Every great person, every great athlete, and Warren Buffett as an investor still reads for hours a day he is learning and he is the best investor ever. And he is learning every single day. We train every single day because every great athlete and great business person trains every single day. So if you lack results, you lack training. Number four, we're almost wrapped up, okay? As entrepreneurs, 
Don't expect to be right the first time, and it's okay because you can keep changing the solution that you're offering your customer to solve the problem, but stay focused on the problem, but be flexible on the solution. A lot of us, you'll have a solution, you'll be supercharged about it, you'll be like, this is the best solution ever, this is gonna work, this is the billion dollar idea, amazing, and then there's real signs that it ain't working, and you gotta have the you know, humility to be like, all right, the problem that I want to solve, I still want to do. The solution, maybe we should try something different. Great entrepreneurs know how to be flexible in their solution, but they stay focused on the problem because the other problem that entrepreneurs have is they're pivoting all the fucking time. All right, pivoting means you're changing the problem that you're solving, not the solution. If you change the solution, you ain't pivoting. You're just trying to solve the problem. But if you change the problem you're trying to solve, then you're a pivot, and statistically, pivots do not work out. If you want to go online, look at the data, pivots do not work out, all right? And this final two questions. If you apply this to your relationships, to your finances, to your business, to school, all right, we all go through ups and downs in life, all right? Things happen that we don't want happening. Ask these two questions to yourself. What else could this mean? And how can this be a good thing? What else could this mean? I'm doing a deal, I'm on the phone, and they say something to me, and I'm like, fuck, 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 I think the person's not gonna buy this thing. Wait, what else could this mean? Maybe this is that person's way of saying, I want to buy this, and that's why I'm asking you all these tough questions and making it seem like I don't wanna buy it. And then if I can figure out how to freaking do this, then I'll imagine how many more people I'm gonna sell because of it. All right, stock market's gonna go down. There's gonna be a whole bunch of us and our friends who are like, fuck, 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 I just lost a whole bunch of money in the stock market. All right, in the next one to three years, it will happen, and you guys can now be the wise people that go, wait, what else could this mean? There's a whole bunch of shit on sale. So, well, how is this a good thing? Well, if I rebalance and move money around, I could actually make more money than I did before. Every situation in life, whenever there's a negative emotion or feeling that you're having about anything, like I said, relationships, finances, work, health, everything, what else could this mean? It's natural for us to all get down and feel negative and have an emotional reaction that's not so constructive, okay? But you gotta ask yourself, what else could this mean? How can this be a good thing? And it will get you into a state to get to where you wanna go. All right, two of the best questions you can ever ask yourself every day. And the final thing that they don't talk about entrepreneurship, and it was lucky for me because I grew up, you know, my dad was a doctor, my mom was a physio, I did kinesiology here. So like, to me, I played sports, so it's like health, 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 fitness, fitness, fitness. But I definitely went through a lull where I gained 50 pounds and I was fucking fat, all right? And, and I was lethargic, my energy was down. Business, coincidentally, also went down. Health matters. Eat clean, work out, do activities, Sweat somehow, some way, every single day. Get your heart rate up. I don't care what you do, but do something to be healthy and really monitor because the people who can sprint the fastest, the longest, and require the least amount of rest to do it again, they will win. And you wanna be the person who has that strength, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and has the stamina to keep going in that sprint. All right, don't underestimate health. They don't talk about it enough in business. All right, so what I wanted to finally, my wrap up was, you know, whatever thing you're gonna embark on, all right, and it could just be a career working for someone else, which is totally fine, because statistically, entrepreneurs don't make money. So if you wanna reach those financial goals and when you do your, your math to figure out what you want in life, I have, way, I have lots of friends who make more money than me and they work for someone, and they're, li they're way less stressed out than me. So like you do not have to be an entrepreneur to make a bunch of money and live this great life and grow and contribute. You don't have to do it. You can be a banker, be a consultant, save money, invest it properly, have that compound over 10, 20 years, be financially free, and then go start a foundation. You don't have to be an entrepreneur now to do it. But whatever you do, shit will happen. And the biggest problem that we all have in life that most humans have in life is that we all think that we shouldn't have any problems. That is the biggest problem that humans have is that we think we shouldn't have any problems. Why has this happened to me? Why did this person do this? Why did I do that? Okay. Problems 
in order for you to have a testimony of look at me, look at how much money I've made, look at what I've done in the world, look what I have, look what I've given, look what I've donated. In order to have that testimony, you've got to go through a test. If you want a million dollar testimony, you're going to have to go through a million dollar test. And if you want a billion dollar testimony, you're going to have to go through a billion dollar test. All right, and shit happens where you will be a victim to some unforeseen circumstance. But that should excite you because now you're in the position to become a victor. You cannot have one without the other, which means you should be welcoming problems in your life and in your business because problems are gifts calling you to grow. Problems are the opportunity that you have to become smarter, to become wiser, to become stronger, and to know how to be a better business person, a better spouse, a better friend. You need this shit. And once that clicks in your head, you're gonna be unstoppable. So I got some books on the screen. All right, because I knew I used to always like lists of books of people um, to know what to read. Um, so once again, I want to thank you guys for your time. Thank you for your attention. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys learned something, and I'll open up the floor um, if you guys want to ask me some questions. Excuse <laughs> So it was, it was a program, so uh, my program was over, um, so that's why I had to leave. So 500 Startups is an accelerator, um, so if you guys have a company that is starting to make money and you want an intro, just, oh, this is the old slide deck. So uh, grant at parkbench.com or at grantfsofficial. So it's a four month long program. You go down there, they give you 150,000 um, and they, they have a team of people that help you do all the marketing and advertising with that money. So at the very end of the program, they are pushing you to raise money. Like the whole point of the program is we know how to game the investor system because they've done it 1,500 times. And so they bring you down there, they get you to create a story around your business, and then they push you in front of all these investors and they teach you how to go raise money. Um, and some of the stuff that, like, like you want to get raise money, investors have a checklist, right? Like, literally, they don't have very much time. They get so much deal flow coming at them. They have a checklist of things that they need to check off for their fund. And so I went to them. I was like, look at this calculation. I totally calculated my market size, and I'm so confident in it. And they're like, yeah, but that's too small. They need to hear a bigger number. And I'm like, yeah, but this is just the reality. I have a $500 million market size. Like, yeah, j just say $4 billion. And I'm like, but that's not it. They're like, yeah, but you could be wrong. And, and just go do that. And, so, and then they teach you the game of raising money. So one, they, they love the boomer bust mentality down there. But then I look at the lifestyle of the entrepreneur, and I'm like, dude, your life sucks. You, you, it's like, it's, you, can, you can do your thing, contribute, run your business, and have a great lifestyle at the same time.